Welcome to The Writer's Dream. I'm Linda Maria Frank, the author of Annie Tillery Mysteries. The Writer's Dream is a forum where writers can talk about how they write their books, how they publish their books, and how they market their books. We have a Facebook page by the name of The Writer's Dream. And if you would like to ask some questions, uh, we would be happy to answer them. Uh, so fire away with those questions, and um, we'll get on with the show. Today's guest is Anne Coltman. Anne is the author of Scarred with Fortune and For the Love of Grandma. Welcome, Anne. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Tell us about yourself. Well, my early career was centered among books because I'm a trained librarian, and I, my first job was to set up a library in our local high school. Now, this was not in the United States? Not in the United States. Where are you from? I, I was born and raised in, the, in British, the former British Guyana, which is now Guyana. And it's the only English-speaking country in all of South America. Wow. <laughs> and um, as I said, I, I, I worked in libraries. I moved on from the school library to our national library. Then I worked with the United States Information Services at the John F. Kennedy Library in Georgetown. And thereafter, I moved on to government. And my career in government took me along a different path. And that career spanned many, many years. Um, but I've always had a passion for writing. Um, as a child, we were encouraged um, to do a lot of storytelling and to um, recite poetry. Uh, my grandmother was a great uh, uh, storyteller, and she loved poetry, and she encouraged us with that. So we had that background, and I always loved writing. Um, so did you write continuously? Yes. Actually, um, in my early years, I did my fair share of essay and article writing, and then that all stopped until I retired. Um, but I could, rem could still remember, as a kid, um, she would give myself, my sister and my brother, the three older ones, a story to read, and then have us um, tell the story. And it was quite amusing. Looking back on it now, mm, she'll get three different versions of the same story. Well, that's like, yeah, <laughs> yes, well, that's, that's like eyewitness accounts, right? Yeah. Three eyewitnesses, and they see three different things. Yeah, three you different. You try to find the commonality amongst them. Yeah. So your grandmother yeah. was sort of the first Oprah, right? Yes, With her books yes, and book yes. Questions. And that's why my first book is called For the Love of Grandma, because, you know, I, she's, you know, Everything that I am today, I think I, you see, she lived with us. And oh, yeah. my grandmother lived with us. Yes, and nowadays you don't have grandmothers living with the family. No, they all live in Florida. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, she, um, she was there for our births and everything, and, you know, she helped raise us and stuff like that. So, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. a special bond. It is. I know it most is. people I know either love their grandmothers or they hate them. There's like yeah. no in between. There's no yeah. like uh, neutral ground there. Um, so, tell me one of your grandmother's best stories. Oh my goodness! Um, the one you like the most. Uh, her Christmas stories, um, and I have a poem about her Christmas stories All right, in so there. So tell us a story, and then you could read. And the poem. Um, she would um, she would pretend you know, um, that Santa is coming to the house on a certain evening. This is, has nothing to do with Christmas Eve. He always shows up before Christmas Eve to give chocolates or something, you know. Not to check things out, huh? And also <laughs> to check things out because she would say, if you're not good, you don't get chocolates, you know. And um, she would put us in her lap in a rocking chair. She'll have all three of us. She was quite a, a good size, so. <laughs> and we were You're tiny okay. kids. <laughs> and she, we will sit, all three of us, on her lap. And 
I don't know how she did it, but she would sit near the window with us, rocking us, and then all of a sudden the window would come open and chocolates would come through the window on the floor. And we would get scared, run out of her, her lap and, you know, go running, you know, and uh, because we were so scared. And that was, um, and we always loved that. Grandma, just tell did us. Did you ever figure out how she did that? Um, eventually, yes. She had somebody <laughs> <See a friend. laughs> put it in, you know, either my dad or, you know, someone of the guys or somebody to just jump up and throw them in or something like that, yeah. Would you like to read from? Um, yes, I would. Would you like me to read the I, Christmas story? Yes, and then whatever else you would like to read. Okay, let me... Um, uh, I did not mark that one, so let me see. Um, Grandma's Christmas stories. Okay, it says here, this is Grandma's Christmas stories. We love to hear Grandma's stories whatever time of day. She can make us want to listen even if we want to play. Her best ones are of Christmas. She tells those once a year. She even looks like Mrs. Claus with her silver gray hair. She'll make us think that Santa was her best, very best friend. She has stories of all the toys, even those she helped mend. Yes, Grandma has seen Santa Claus, but she says he's rather shy. His rosy cheeks will blush to match the twinkle in his eye. He drops in to check on children to see if they've been good. So try to be good children. Sleep early if you could. She tells of many quiet nights when she would suddenly feel a breeze. His sleigh is passing by, she says, then everyone would freeze. Although we heard or saw nothing, Grandma would insist it's true. He heard her tell his stories and he wants to visit too. She hurries to a window to wave and say hello, then comes back to the room with her face all aglow, her pockets filled with chocolates and marshmallows so sweet. We scrambled up a few and count all before we eat. She, convinces, she convinced us that it was Santa who put them there. He threw them in the window and they landed on her chair. She was just in time to get them and to fill her pockets. I didn't even have time to tell him that Mama lost her locket. Oh well, he'll come again, she says, and continues telling her story. Her voice is firm and, and compelling because Grandma's in her glory. When she got her full attention, Grandma's thoughts seemed far away as she began to tell the story of that first Christmas day. It happened very long ago in a manger filled with hay. Oh, that's beautiful. Now, Guiana is um, a tropical country. Tropical. How mm -hmm. did you handle Santa in the sleigh in a tropical country? Actually, I'm just curious. <laughs> I know, but you know, we, we always dreamt about snow and of course being a British a British colony, you had all the British influence, mm -hmm. you know, and um, all the, your Christmas cards had, were not tropical cards, they were just cards with snow and, uh, you know, sleighs and stuff like that. And um, we just dreamt that there was somewhere, wherever Santa was, there was snow. It wasn't where, he wasn't where we lived, we knew that. He was in the North Pole, so there was snow. But he had to have special, special kind of things on his uh, sleigh runner so he can land on your roofs without the snow, huh? Well, I, we never I, thought I mean, of that. Listen, reason. we never thought <laughs> we never thought of that as children. Well, you know? that's good. That because yeah. uh, I I was always worried about that because we didn't ever have snow on. Well, once in a while we'd have snow on Christmas, and I would always be worried. How is Santa going to land that sleigh? Yeah. There's no snow on the roof, but uh, somehow or other, uh, 
It happened. It happened. It's yeah. happened. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. So, do you have another one? Um, These are beautiful. Yes. Um, let me read lessons from Grandma. Um, grandmothers are special teachers. They teach you right from wrong, just as mom and dad do, but usually without a frown. Patience, love, and kindness are a blessing, Grandma said. Say your prayers and give thanks for all blessings before eating or going to bed. Grandma taught me poetry as soon as I could talk. She loved to recite for me before I knew to walk. Her recitations were childish nursery rhymes when I was quite small. But as I grew, Grandma recited biblical psalms and passages of scripture and all. Grandma taught me to be disciplined and have respect for others. It was something unheard of for children to be rude to grandmothers. In fact, children were not rude at all in her day, Grandma said. Children must be seen and not heard instead. Grandma taught me many games and tricks she had up her sleeve. She also taught me to cook and sew when I was old enough for these. She taught me to be strong and fearless. I don't know how much of that lesson I learned. <laughs> Nevertheless, she said pride goes before a fall, and if you play with fire, you'll be burned. I remember her words of wisdom. She had a quotation for every event. She often reinvented herself and always said what she meant. Dear Grandma, had she been here today, she would be shocked by this generation. Dogs among doctors, she would say, and end the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can't say that uh, she was alone in those feelings. <laughs> um, this, I would like, can I read one more? Sure. This one here, it says, it's Grandma's health cures, you know. <laughs> she loved her um, home remedies. Didn't care for patent medicine, for, you know, drug doctors. You have to be very, very ill, you know, to resort to that. As far as she's concerned, her things will work the best. And um, it was quite, quite funny because, you know, with all the medical um, people in the family, <laughs> she always had a run in with them because she felt her, her uh, remedies would work the best. This is grandma's health cures. No need for the doctor if grandma is around. She'll cure you of any illness with the spices she has ground. She makes a mean poultice to slap onto your chest. <laughs> My grandmother did that too. <laughs> it will surely shake off that cold if you take plenty of rest. Her cures for a simple cut or bruise will make you want to spin. She likes to use iodine, which will never make you grin. Grandma keeps a variety of ginger in several little jars. There's ginger snaps and ginger sweets and dry ginger bars all geared for stopping that cough and curing a sore throat. Why? She mixes it with honey and fresh milk from a goat. If you spike a fever and grandma is around, she'll wrap you up in several herbs, your feet and hands all bound. Then you must have her chicken soup, which is steaming hot, for it never stops boiling. She just keeps adding to the pot. If your skin is dry and itchy, grandma's balm will work the best. Why, it's honey, lemon, and castor oil with beeswax from the nest. She keeps some special ointment if you should have a burn. She gives you lots of orange juice and milk to help you learn. Cinnamon cloves and nutmeg, all ground to a pulp. Take it with some cod liver oil in one big gulp. It will keep you strong and healthy you would not get ill. You could also have some peppermint oil if you have a chill. She kept a secret recipe for upset stomach too. It was made of aniseed and licorice, but just a few. Dear, dear grandma, she had a plaster for every sore. So we all got better and was better than before. <laughs> 
I remember the mustard plaster for the for the chest, chest cold. Yeah. Uh, oh it my would make goodness. your eyes tear. Yeah. Your teeth fall out. Yeah. But it cleared up the cough. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> was was wonderful. And when you have mumps, they put a. Uh, she had a way of. Yeah. Boiling. There was um, some black stuff. No sweet potatoes. Really. And. And then she will cut the sweet potato and put butter on it and then slap it on <laughs> hot sweet potato onto your oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> and then we'll eat it off as soon as she moves away from the room. What doesn't kill you will make you stronger, that's is right. that it? That's right. <laughs> that, that's interesting. So um, you worked for the UN for a while. Yes. What did you do with the UN? Well, I worked with the ambassadors. We worked, um, I had several different um, ambassadors that I worked for, um, all leading up to the Security Council, uh, which was very, very interesting. You know, you meet people from all walks of life. Um, there must have been, oh my goodness, uh, but more than a dozen different ambassadors that I've worked for. And that was very, very, my job was really with the General Assembly. Our, our uh, um, mission worked with the different um, arms of the, of the General Assembly and the UN of, at, as a whole. What did you do yeah. exactly? Well, I was the secretary of the ambassador. Okay, so you just yes. made sure that they had all of their papers and, and were in the right place at did the right all, time. Did all, the, did all the schedules, did all the meetings, did all the, um, when someone comes in as new, mm -hmm. I make all the contacts, you see? And um, you have to know who they will have to see first. That's usually the so uh, social social calls, and that would be for the um, uh, members of the Security Council first. They're first in line, and then you have the um, other countries, other um, committees. Um, the region is divided up into five. The world, what I should I what I should say is the world is divided up there into five regions, and you go to you know, all the important regions, the least developed countries, the developed countries and stuff like that. But you have to s make sure that all of, he has all these meetings and mm -hmm. um, I, had, oh, I had to schedule all of that. Yeah. Now, did these experiences influence your writing? Because I know you've written a, uh, a novel not Michael scarred with fortune. Not really. Not, not really, really. Not, not really. You escaped this is, completely. This from is the what event. I'm saying. When um, from the time I because when I started working with the government of Guyana, that just spilled over to coming to the United States mm -hmm. and working with the UN mission, um, UN organization, had nothing to do with my writing. But I always had this passion for writing. Mm -hmm. it, was all, it was one of my goals. So tell me about Scarred and, with Fortune. Um, Scarred with Fortune is a novel. It is um, the story about an ordinary family and their extraordinary world. A world of secrets and anguish and um, uh, evil intentions, family honor, wealth, lots of wealth. Um, it's a story about a young uh, teenage unwed mother and her struggle um, with um, difficult decisions and 